good night. Coffee tea or lavish with Mona in the fatigue of a hives. It's been all week and I have some tea and I said, you know what, let me hurry up and make this video and bring the tea before my favorite show, One More Chance. And so tonight when I'm done watching One More Chance, I will be uploading the video for One More Chance and then I'm going to watch Potomac and then I'm going to watch um, Salt Lake City and then we'll see how it goes. I don't think I'm doing Potomac tonight because I have to find my dress to wear to the, um, the reunion episode. So I don't know how I'm doing this, but tonight I decided to get it together because all week I've been wanting to do my video. I, don't, I, I have a laziness to me the, with the, um, the makeup and all day. How does me want to be bothered with all day? Yeah, I wash my hair. I'm getting ready to change this hair. Hopefully we have a new look coming up for the holidays maybe it's not this week but hopefully soon so um good night coffee tea lavish with mona in the fatigue of the heights i'm coming out like a starlight busting out in the night no contest men of fight my came up by right and jackie gave me insight i'm a pre-celebrity life i want to bring the team i bring it spiritualized right that's a she yeah you jara yeah. oh, come here open the door yeah so hi good night coffee tea elaborate your morning in the fatigue of the hides um it's been a while and yes we are back together again i have tea that i wanted to bring and things that i wanted to discuss all week and i've just been <sighs> you know with the mental health um so let's do the mental health check before we do um the tea that i'm gonna bring um i am feeling much better in myself I am, um, I have gotten in contact with a few legislators. They, I had, they have opened cases for me and are looking into my, um, into my, um, transfer and that I requested over five months ago. And also they're looking into, um, stopping the violent, um, threats to my life. And so therefore, I am super excited to be able to have that kind of assistance because I told you I felt like I needed, um, um, what you call it? Um, I felt like I needed, um, I need witness uh, protection because of the manner in which the people are attacking me and all of the things that were going on. But I put those, those things to the side because I feel clear um, in my mind that if anything should happen to me that my kids will be amply taken care of and that's what I needed to know. I needed to know that there were people that knew what was going on with me. I needed to know that I was no longer suffering in silence and I needed to know that I am not alone. Um, my friends, yes, it's important to know that you have friends, but it's important to know that you have people in the law, legislators. It's important to know that when you're a person who was protected by the government like I am, protected by immigration like I am, protected by my religion like I am, where to go if something happens. And so I'm gonna be moving into my next um, phase of activism and um, political aspirations once we are finished with my case because that's something that's important to me. As I said, guys, I wanna start a nonprofit um, for people who've been bullied and harassed because I definitely, definitely, I'm out here screaming bullying no more, discrimination no more, bullying awareness, discrimination awareness, and all these things. In the United States of America, you have a right. You, When you go to the doctor, you get a bill of rights. Everywhere you go, every organization, every government building, I live in government housing. So, excuse me, for the fact that I live in government housing, it's imperative that the government knows that they are responsible for taking care of me and my kids. And if they don't, and they drop the ball, I should not be someone they, people are asking, you know, what happened? You need to know what happened. There was a case in Florida, about two months ago with a in Orlando with a baby and a mother who were left in a car and people who were hurt and left to expire in the car the baby and all these type of things and the perpetrator was not caught and people would have been like who did it if the person they was injured first which was the father was injured by his friend and he knew who you know sh you know shot him or whatever and so he called the mother to let her know they 
you know, they had been kidnapped by a friend that had been in the home with them or whatever. With all of that, it's important for me because they were able to identify who the perpetrator was, but they still are not able to catch the perpetrator. For me, I live in government houses, my housing, my perpetrator, the perpetrators against me, which everybody in the world knows. I have no other um, arguments. I have no arguments with anybody. I'm not beefing with anybody. I don't have any problems with anybody. I'm a person that stays by myself. I'm a spiritual person. So you never really see a spiritual person with a bunch of people. They're mostly like by themselves. So I'm generally by myself. So it, for me to have something to happen to me and you guys not know what happened or nobody knows you know, who did this to me, I, I, that's not my way. My way is to make sure that I set away from my kids because we have been through too much lack. We've been through too much poverty. We've been through too many um, 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 we've been through too many down times. We've been to too many down places to allow ourselves to be held down, kept down, or anything to happen to me at this time and my kids not receive compensation or my kids just be out there by themselves. I'm not interested in that happening. And so I personally, I have to finger the perpetrator. I have to finger the person who's threatening my life. And not only that, they're bold enough to want to be seen and, 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 and speak out about, you know, boasting about all they need to do is give me like one good ass whooping and I'll stop practicing my religion or they're going to give me one good ass whooping and I won't be venting in my house or something like that, which is completely against the law. And so for things that are against the law, I am here to say I enforce the law. I use the law to the fullest extent. I do not back down from it. I do not run from it. If I even have problems, I don't care. Like, that's just me. For people who do not understand that or do not accept it or find that there's a problem with it, I don't care. Um, it's important for me to save my life. And I've always felt like this. And I've always disassociated myself from people who are putting me in danger because I have three kids by myself. And... I'm not going to put them in danger, and I'm not going to leave them in any kinds of dangerous situations. So, with that being said, um, for the mental health check, I'm doing pretty good at this point um, compared to um, how I felt on November 5th, or November 1st, or November 6th, or November 7th. Um, it's, um, what, two weeks later, and... The attack on me was October 31st and today's November 21st. So I would say, yeah, it's been three weeks. And um, as the weeks have went by, I had tried to close the thoughts to the bad things in my mind. And also I have tried to move forward to a better place and a better space in my mind. So that's where I'm at. Um, because it's an ongoing situation and because they're coming out every morning, um, you know, the neighbors, they come out to, um, they come out to, um, lay with me. They put stuff outside in the mornings, especially when I'm going out with my son. It's very, very frustrating for me, but I'm not going to allow that to bother me because I am using my protective resources to make sure that I protect me and my son because my son is very important to me and putting my son in danger is one of the biggest things for me. Um, and I won't be completely at peace or at ease until I move, which should be, you know, hopefully the legislator should be able to get into NYCHA's levels to find a way to get me out of here because i been ready i was born ready hook anyway so i have some things i want to talk about today we're going to talk about um the travis scott astro world um occurrence we're going to talk about zach stacy and his baby mother and the video that was trending this week um, I wanted to talk about the New Jersey teen and her mom who was arrested after she was reported um, missing. Um, one moment. Right. So I wanted to talk about that a little bit. And I wanted to talk about the Ultimate Girls Trips. Um, Bravo's Ultimate Girls. Real Housewives Ultimate Girls Trips. I wanted to talk about Kiana and Ronell Ronell Burns. And 
the conversation with Bobby Lice and Roland Ray. So I got a couple things to talk about. Let's see if we can get it in before um, my show starts. One more chance. <laughs> I think I'll be white eye and bushy tail um, tonight if I just get some stuff out first. So that was um, we got the Travis Scott and we got the the Zach Stacy and we got the just show you more and we have ultimate girls trip and then we have Kiana and Ronell Burns. I wanted to talk a little bit about all these things. And then we have the conversation with Roland Ray and Bobby Lights. So, uh, about six topics. So, let me dive in. So, with Travis Scott, I hadn't, I talked about it for like two minutes on my last video with One More Chance, but I actually wanted to talk about it with you guys because I don't know what's going on with my hair I washed my hair so I wanted it to retain its natural like you know the curl part but it's not doing too well tonight so let's put it in a braid excuse me and you know the braid speaking of which I'm going to put it into a braid like the woman was braiding the girl here in Wheel of Time, Amazon's Wheel of Time. I don't watch um, season one, episode one to three of today because I was binging on that and I had a great time watching that. So that's my new go-to. Um, so I think maybe I'll drop a little uh, review about it at the end. Let's see how quickly we can get it over with. All right. So... Oh, um, Travis Scott Astro World. Just to let you know, what happened? I just want the cup. The cup? Yeah. Okay. okay. So now, um, I wanted to give you the updates of day and let you know my my fan base, my um audience to know exactly what's going on with that, because I know it's a lot in the news, it's a lot of updates, and I wanted to wait to see like, you know what you know a couple weeks after it's been three weeks so actually this occurred on november 5th that's the day i went live on ig to tell my life story november 5th was a spiritual day so i didn't realize that when i was doing my live but it definitely is a spiritual day and so it was a lot going on that day i could just tell you that um in the spiritual realm it was a lot going on and over there by astroworld it was a lot going on. So Travis singing, yeah, after stopping the set to pick somebody up, he stopped his set at Astro World to to tell them that somebody had fallen and to pick the person up, but he never stopped the show and he continued like a minute later and he was just singing, yeah, while they're bringing anybody up. He's like, yeah, yeah, I don't know. Um, Travis was, I've seen clips of him before this performance, like, maybe 2017 2018 saying that he does his show because he wants the blood and the rage and he said the people offer their bodies because he was doing an interview and somebody was like he was like yeah man i just want the blood and they were like well who's bleeding over this in on the stage and he's like no you know it's not nobody's bleeding the people you know the the fans offer their bodies so apparently fans offer their bodies to you know entertainers so to, to die or something so that they can um give them good you know energy feedback love fan base i don't i don't i don't know um 500 people broke through the barriers earlier in the day before travis scott even hit the stage so the, the performance was a liability before he even entered the arena maybe um it, this had been going on throughout the day it wasn't like when travis scott went on stage is when the barriers broke or when people they had already 500 people ran through the gates and released themselves into the show. 
We don't know if they had COVID. We don't know if they no, nobody's like wearing a mask. It, it's it's a lot. Um, there was talk of needles being stuck in people's necks. So my question is: Is this why people are always falling out in the olden day concerts, like the Michael Jackson concerts and all those people? Why were people falling? Like, is this something that they do to perpetuate a myth of, you know, the entertainer is so entertaining that people are like passing out in their very presence? Like, I want to know. Like, that led me to ask that question for myself. Guys, also remember, it's Cafeteria Labrish. If you see something you like, if you hear what you like, if you like my reviews, my commentary, and my channel, don't forget to like, share, subscribe. Don't forget to comment. Don't forget to leave your feedback and hit the notification bell so that you are notified every time I upload a video or I go live, okay? Just to put that in there because I always wait till the end. Um, Yeah, so, you know, back in the day, you know, Michael Jackson would be performing on stage and... You look and it's like five, ten people just falling out. A hundred people, ten, thousands of people just falling out, falling out. Where, is that something that they do? Is that something that they do when they're having these shows? Do they go around and actually like, you know, stick people with needles? I, I know people, you know, are like binging like on like regular drugs or whatever. But I'm trying to figure this out. Is that is that the norm? And is it just a, it caused some kind of panic in the um, uh, Travis show or what's going on? I don't know. Um, they said a security officer was restraining a citizen and he felt that he was pricked. Um, when he went to the hospital, he got Narcan and there was a need of prick evidence on his body by medical staff. The security team stated there were 11 cardiac cardiac arrests happen, happening simultaneously. So it wasn't the crush or the fact that the people couldn't breathe. It was people going into like basically heart attacks at the same time. So I don't know if that has something to do with the alleged needle pricks. I don't know if it has something to do with some kind of um, experimental um, um, drug they were using. I'm not exactly certain, but we'll definitely talk about it. Now, there are complaint allegations, um, and there were that um, there's a lawsuit being filled. Now, I'm hearing today, I think, was the last thing I heard was $3 billion lawsuit filed against uh, Travis and uh, Drake and um, Live Nation. And the allegations are that there were no concern for safety and that they ignored the one inside before the performances um there was in inadequate plans protocols in place for a concert that size um they were more interested in money than safety at the patron's expense and encouraged by travis to forget about their safety um there was negligence and gross negligence and there are over 200 complaints up until maybe three days ago drake also was um, named in a lawsuit because they believed that the massive surge happened because Drake came on stage and that further inside of the crowd. Um, Travis has been arrested twice for this before, and so they're saying that there's no regard, there's blatant disregard for life. Um, Kylie was escorted out with tons of security while people were dying, and she still didn't, and Travis still didn't stop the show, and nobody stopped the show, and no one let anyone know to stop the show. But they knew that it was time to go based upon the type of violence or the type of uh, crowd surge or, you know, what type of um, unsafe conditions were occurring for her and her baby. They exited the uh, arena. And so, therefore, um, it, it was with tons of security. So, there was knowledge that there was something going on They we needed to get out of here immediately. Um, Chris Jenner was posting flowers all day on November 6th. Um, there are allegations on um, all over the internet that Travis is, you know, people are saying that this was a demonic ritual, it was a sacrifice, blah, blah, blah. Um, and, you know, people are asking, I got DMs like, was this um, Chris Jenner's sacrifice because she was re receiving flowers all day Saturday and instead of taking the day to like, yes, I know it's your birthday, to like comm commiserate with the people who died or were dying or in the hospital at on November 6th, she was posting the flowers all day long. So, everybody wants to know, did she get all of her flowers? I'm just saying. Um, Travis is losing his endorsements uh, like this. Nike postponed the Travis Scott Air Max One shoes, which were to drop on December 16. They postponed the shoes in respect of the people who passed away. The Houston Rockets, they had Travis Scott Night that promo was canceled and instead they had a moment of silence i believe um mcdonald's had a collab with travis um scott 
Um, it's a meal promo. They had a meal promo event at Downey, California, I think earlier this year or last year, and it was full of people. They were pushing and shoving, and the Downey City stated it was not approved or permitted by the city for, for them to have any type of gathering at the McDonald's, and they saw it as a crowd gathering, and people had to, um, they had to call in, you know, police and all types of um, levels of security to break that crowd up, and so McDonald's wants to uh, basically disassociate or separate themselves from Travis Scott travesty right now. Epic Games removed Travis Scott from their Fortnite games, I believe. They removed his skins and some other things that were um, that involved the game and his the role that he was playing in the game. I'm just saying, like, Travis Scott is a grown man. I don't even understand why Travis Scott or Sweetie are the ones that are endorsing um, uh, McDonald's. I don't know why McDonald's isn't like the Paw Patrol or um, the Ghostbuster movie, you know, like I don't understand. Like, why would you be using people that are like hip hop and rap um, entertainers? They their lyrics are not catered for kids, and this is like a fast food restaurant that is catered for kids. So, who are you catering to, and what genre of music do these kids listen to? It's my five years old, five year old is saying, Mommy, I want to go to McDonald's. He doesn't know Travis Scott. He doesn't know Sweetie. Why would you be promoting through them? Like, so that's like McDonald's, the businesses, our, our, our marketing experts, all the people that are concerned, they have to start. Like, you give these entertainers these endorsements and you take them away when they mess up and do stuff like this. But at the end of the day, who were you marketing to? You know what I mean? So that's it for the update on Travis Scott for me. I just wanted to give you um, what was going on. As I said, it was a spiritual day. Um, that was around the Samhain, which is a pagan holiday where um, the pagans would meet and have gatherings and have their bonfires and their rituals and things of that nature. So that was already a, a, a time period where you do ritualistic things. Don't forget November 1st is considered the Day of the Dead, October 31st to, excuse me, November 1st is when they say, um, they say the, uh, the veil lifts on October 31st between the spiritual realm and the natural realm, and that, that's when there are openings in the, in the fabric that separates us, and they, there's crossing over in that time period so i understand because i also go in and out of the realms in my um spiritual um practice and so it's a very 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 spiritual time um um it's a time of uh seeding and harvest so basically it just seemed like it was some alleged harvesting of souls going on there and now i read today they Kylie, actually, she's losing some endorsements, it seems. I have to go back deeper into that because I didn't even really look into it, the, the, the trending that I saw, because I'm going to address that diff separately from Travis because I think that the way that everything is going is just to break Travis down. For some reason, I'm just like, damn, you got with these people. You got with this family. You were nobody. You were up and coming, like every up and coming person that has gotten with this family. And this is just like this is just like deja vu at this point like damn it's deja vu at this point like really like the Kanye West the Lamar Odom the the people like the, the Tigger and the, the dumb like remember when Travis got with Kylie people thought Kylie was already pregnant they thought the baby was for Tigger Tigger came out and said hell nah that's my baby and it was, you know, controversy surrounding they, they put him on the forefront, said that he was the one that was the child's father and that this is the person she going to be with and they gave her to him. And it seemed like whoever these people are with, the people that they're given to are up and coming and that they use their social media pull to help them to rise, but you owe them something when they do date. And for a couple of years, you rise and rise and rise, but then there's a peak in their practices or whatever that they're doing which you know that this, the family is allegedly Armenian so they have a totally different type of religion a totally different type of background a totally different type of 
uh, religious uh, background than even I know. Like, that's like gypsy spirit. I don't know. I would have to go into it a little bit deeper for you. But anyway, um, I would definitely go into that a little bit deeper for you and find out and do some research on like Armenian background and Armenian religion and so on. And then we'll, we'll bring that forward. But um, realistically, what they're saying is that um, so whatever practice that they do in, like their spiritual practices, they get with these people and they're using melanated people and they get with the melanated people and they have babies with the melanated people and they also use the melanated people to boost their um their fame and the melanated people use them to boost their fame so there's some kind of mutual agreement or or pact or understanding in the relationship that is developed i don't know if it's pr i don't know if it's real relationships i just don't know travis was put with kylie Kylie was having a baby. He's the father. She's pregnant again and all of this stuff. Now, he has climbed and climbed. Look, Ma, I made it. Look, Ma, you made it. But where's your mom? Because you done had this thing happen now. And it's all these type of people coming out dead. And it's like little kids. And nine-year-old Ezra Blunt passed away. And there was a 10-year-old, they said. And then there was a baby in the crowd on somebody's shoulders. Looked like Papa age. Like, I would never bring Papa... I would never bring Nana my kids. I don't care how old they are. And you know I got a 26-year-old. I would never bring Nana my kids. My kids, could, my daughter couldn't look at me at 26 years old and say, Mommy, I want to go to that type of concert because I, I, I would literally, like, kidnap her. Like, I've never done that in nobody. I would just hold her down. Like, I would not be leaving them. My, no, not my child. Nope. We went to the Bronx Street Top Zoo adventure for Mother's Day. They took me. To the Bronx Street Top Zoo, that was some zip line in. I'm gonna send you, I'm gonna show y'all a video. I'm gonna upload the video as a shorts or something, or I give you a, a, a like a edited clip of the different scene. Child, out the first thing we did was the zip line in. So we went up and stuff. You know I'm scared of heights. You know I don't do that. And we got up there and it, man, my spiritual mother my spiritual ancestors and everybody are like brave people like fearless warriors man i was on that thing like i was the last like i had let my kids go before me and then you know i got the thyroid hyperthyroid so like by the time they said go across i felt like my heart was coming up i just boom 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 boom, boom. and i held on tight to that thing and i was like jesus if i fall out no like oh my god like i was scared as hell but i did that thing now I got to the other side and they had us when we got to the other side climb some stairs and go up higher to cross back over. Hell nah, nigga. Walk sir, walk me downstairs, please. Just just walk me downstairs because I ain't climbing nothing else. I'm not going across nothing else and I ain't doing nothing else. I did nothing else. They went to the little trees where you, you know, this, <laughs> you know, you have these obstacle courses and all of that. I stood and I watched them. I sat down. I took, you know, uh, selfies. I video myself. I did all of that. I used up the whole area for, like, the scene. I was not going on any of those things anymore because I am not a glutton for punishment, and I do not do that to myself. My kids, they, especially my oldest, she loves that type of stuff. Like, for me personally, I'm like, come down. You need to get down. Like, you need to get down. <laughs> Oh, I'm like, you need to get down. They're not they're not feeling me or understanding what I'm saying, but I don't care. Like, you need to get down. So, like, for me personally, like, with my child, like, I would not, like, no. Mm -mm. So, not even my eldest would I take to a concert of that size. And especially now in the time that we are, like, with so many unknowns, with so many questions, with so many question marks and so many things that are occurring, like, at this point in time, I would not. Um, go to any type of concert like that. I would avoid that type of stuff. I would avoid that setting and I would avoid that scene. Like right now, 2021, going into 2022, like my safest place is in my home. Like right now. Like Elon Musk trying to go to Mars, trying to colonize Mars and everything like that. We'll cross that bridge when we get today. But for right now, the safest place for me is in my home, me and my kids. Like I'm, I'm just going to tell y'all because there's too much going on. Um, Remember the book, William Cooper? He wrote a book, Behold a Pale Horse, and he told us that 
you know conspiracy theory don't be triggered he told us they you know there was going to be some kind of like disaster and you go to like the dome and you go in with your family and you come out by yourself everybody's separated nobody knows where anybody is and stuff like that so that's scary to me so like i hold on tight to mine like that's the most important thing to me so yeah i wanted to talk about that and we'll be you know the, this story is not dying right now they, there are um, news out there saying that he's locked. Travis is locked up in his house. He's not coming out. Allegedly, we haven't seen anything else. I didn't like the apology. I think he was on some, on one and he was coming down because he was on maybe like 20 when he was on stage. And he did not even... I don't think he was cognizant of what was really occurring like in the moment. I think they, he, he was on something, allegedly, and it did not allow him to experience the full full picture or the full scale of what was occurring and because of that when he did come down from that and realized that all these things had happened I think that he literally went crazy and I don't think that, not crazy like off his rocket but I think like his mind totally blank like and then to understand that this happened because of you like nobody even if they're using you for ritualistic purposes and things like that I don't think they you are ready. I don't think you're aware, and I don't think people know that this is what's going to happen. This is like the Ariana Grande, the Ariana Grande concert where the people were bombed and so on and so forth. She didn't know there was going to be a bomb, but she, you know, she, um, she actually, I mean, she actually took some of the blame of that for herself because people wouldn't be there if it wasn't for her coming to her concert. So that's a hard thing. All right. Myself, I wouldn't say that the man doesn't care. I believe that he cares completely. I don't believe that he was ready for this. Bro wasn't ready. I don't think that he knew anything like this would occur. And just the way he was talking, I don't think the apology was insincere. I just think that he was still in whatever influence of whatever he had maybe had and was just coming down from that. And so the full impact of what had occurred did not hit him yet and so i feel bad for travis i feel bad for anybody that this happened to i do not think that he set out for that i don't think as i told you before guys these artists these entertainers they're not prepared for this they do not know necessarily what's going to happen and what's going to occur they place them in front of the camera and say hey sing and tell those people to rage and we're looking for the rage and we're looking for this and we're looking for that and you know your handlers and your you know your management and your, you know your team is telling you like this is how you're supposed to act this is what you're supposed to do you know wear this clothes wear this outfit whatever you know you're an endorser you know you're an influencer you know um this shirt put the shirt on like he probably didn't pick out his own shirt. Somebody probably dressed him. Somebody probably laid his outfit out for him. People are talking about the people moving through the portals. He don't have nothing to do with the the set. Like, that's the producers and the people behind him. Like, they have their agenda, and he is only there to facilitate it. So, I feel bad for Travis. I want to see what's going to happen. I hope he don't go crazy. I hope he don't go off his rockers, and I hope he don't go Kanye ways. Because where Kanye West is, is where Travis is headed like that's a trajectory for me like when i look and i see like you know kanye you know he did his little um he did his little um speech and his rant you know talked about jay-z they locked him up whatever whatever um 5150 hold you know whatever hold they placed on him he went to rehab or whatever came back out like wanted to talk about everything that's occurring wanting to talk about what he's going through with the family all right the family from we, we don't know the origin and um want to talk about like the injustices and the things that he's experiencing but he cannot and so he had to be semi-silent and since he was silent he just haven't been the same i don't even know what's going on i don't even want to touch that yet i gotta see a little bit more because i told you i want to see what's going on with donda uh it's a lot going on so it's a lot going on I need us to understand that what we're seeing is they're playing tricks with our minds and so on and so forth. So you got to keep your eyes open because it's a lot going on. You cannot afford to be tricked. You cannot afford to be, to be like, um, have anything come upon you unawares. You got to be sober and vigilant because your enemy, the adversary, walking about like a roaring lion seeking whom to devour. We have to keep our eyes open at a time like this. We have to be sober and vigilant at a time like this because it is a lot going on in the world. And I don't know where the world is headed. I know Elon Musk is headed to Mars. I am about to go put in my petition to Elon Musk. I'm about to be doing his um, little 
I'm I'm gonna start doing Elon Musk because I need him to know that when he's going to Mars to take me with him. Yeah, I'm the only black girl you're gonna bring, the only poor girl you're gonna bring. I don't know, bring me and my family, you're gonna bring us. Elon, you're not gonna leave us behind. No, no, no more left behind. No more in the fatigue of the highs left behind. Okay? <laughs> and that's it for um um Astro World and Travis Scott. So moving on to Zach Stacy. Former NFL uh uh, player Zach Stacy beaten on his ex girlfriend in front of the five month old baby. Um, he threw her into the TV. He gave her a tooth to the face, and then he threw her head first into the walker. They say he might have CTE. CTE. What? What? What's CTE? I don't even know. CTE. Chronic traumatic encephalopathy. Encephalopathy. Chronic traumatic encephalopathy is a neurodegenerative disease linked to repeated blows to the head and the symptoms can include behavioral problems mood problems and problems with thinking it often gets worse over time and can result in dementia it is unclear if the risk of suicide is altered so a lot of our sports in most documented cases have occurred in athletes involving striking based combat sports like boxing kickboxing mixed martial arts um, contact sports, football, American football, Australian rules football, professional wrestling, those type of stuff. So whenever you're in, involved in those types of uh, um, game playing or combat sports, you run the risk of getting the CTE based upon the knocks to your head. And CTE, one of them is the, you know, the behavior problems, the mood swings and everything, and you just beat people, like, for no reason. So um, he was on the run, and he fled the state of Florida, he used to be a youth football ambassador with Transperfect Music City Bowl um, in his um, city and state. Um, they have sent help, since held him. They've caught him. He's under arrest. He's been arrested for this. His, his um, ex, she was pretty, like, calm about it. And she was like, you know, please, yo, you know, stop. You know, stop. You know, stop, Zach. Stop. Zach, stop. Like, as a as as a survivor of domestic violence at a young age and determined at that young age that that was not something that I was going to be continuing in for no reason that's why my immigration status is the way it is because I chose not to be beaten and battered at 18, 19 years old and didn't know how long that was going to occur and they said I had to stay with my husband for two years and he battered me within May, June, July, August, three months and it was just too much for me and it was too much for him too because we already had been going through it so just to stay because of this document at 18 years old it was just not I did not understand what that was and I did not understand as a child how to stay in there and my husband was my best friend so even though he was abusive he was my best friend and so i knew he didn't want to go home to mama i didn't want him to have to go home neither i felt like we could live together in the same house and still coexist as husband and wife and you know try to you know separate ourselves in that manner but we were too young and we had our issues and we had our emotions and we're both aries so you already know it's two bulls in one pen. It was never going to work. Never, never, never. Like, when you're older and more mature, two Aries can be together. But when you're young like that, it's just like, bread. who, what, where, when, how? Nope. <laughs> so, that ended. So, um, we'll continue to um, see if we get any updates on this. It seems like that woman had been abused for um, quite a while. And she was used to it. And she was taking them blows like pro. She was taking them blows like she was a wrestler. I thought that it was one of those wrestling shows and they, they, the blows wasn't real because it was just and he was just turning her into this sending her into that and, and then she, she, she was just like calm and I was just like where they do this at because I'd have been screaming like get the fuck off of me ah! you know so I, I don't know moving on um, one thing I do want to say as a um, survivor of domestic violence 
domestic violence is something that I am very much against. As I said, you know, I'll be doing my nonprofit. It will be inclusive of bullying, domestic violence, people being hurt. Where have you been hurt? To know where to go, to know who to turn to, and to get the law to be on your side and to help you to find justice. So that's something that's very important to me, and that's something that I'll be moving into um, very soon once I have moved and completed my goals for where I am now. Um, I wanted to talk about a New Jersey teen. Her name is Jashaya Jashay Moore. She was missing. And her mother did a, um, a press conference saying, I'm looking for you. I need you. I love you. I need you to come home. And the little girl was missing. She was in New Jersey. She was in the Bronx. She was between Jersey and New York. And they saw her in surveillance footage and everything. And then they finally found her. So when the police came she told them that she was being abused by her mom that she was beaten that she was stabbed in her shoulder she was forced to beg in the streets and she had to come home with a certain amount of money every day the mother sprayed bleach in her eyes and she's had her braids pulled out so i guess she's been very abusive to her they ended up locking up the mom so that was really funny because she did a press conference looking for a child, one for her child, calling out for her child. And when the child was found, the child made a report of her abuse and they locked her up. And the mayor of New Jersey said, just to let the kids know they, they are there for them. Like if something's going on at home and you're not being treated well or you're being abused, like let the system know because they are there for you. And they said that the girl was seen more comfortable wherever she was at. So... They took the other child out of the home. So both of them have been taken out of the home and the mom has been placed in jail. So that's 15-year-old um, Jashaya Moore in New Jersey. So I wanted to talk about that as well. All right. So the that's it for Jashaya Moore. The next thing that I wanted to talk about was the um, Real, Housewives of, Real Housewives Ultimate Girls trip. So you have Kenya and Cynthia, Luann and Ramona, um, Teresa and Melissa, and then you had Kyle from Beverly Hills. So on the way to get there, the ladies were calling around to each other to find out about, because some of the ladies knew each other, some of them didn't. So they were calling around to find out about each other and to say, like, what do you think about so-and-so and stuff like that. So Ramona called Teresa the Scarecrow. Everybody's worried about Kenya. Um, Ramona st staked her claim from the offset because she said that she she was the oldest one or the one with the most seniority in the Real Housewives franchise and that they helped to make the Housewives franchise global over there in New York and she deserves like the best of everything. So um Cynthia had a mini court cutting for Kenya for her leaving baby um, Brooklyn behind. And um, that was cute. I thought Cynthia was going to cut Brooklyn's picture at first. I was just like, what's happening? I don't know. Um, Cynthia requested a master bedroom for Kenya. Most people said yes. Ramona said, well, we can give it to her. Because I understand, you know, when you just had a baby and da 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 da. She said, I'll just have the next best room. Uh, Ramona is already calling Kenya a bitch in the first 15 minutes into the show. Um, Kenya being called Portia by Ramona. Ramona choosing her room, going into the house saying, my name's say yes. <laughs> I have nothing like her. I don't think so. Unless she's an Aries. <laughs> Listen, I haven't watched uh, Housewives of New York because it's just had gotten too much for me. And I used to watch it faithfully because I love Ramona. I love Luann. I used to watch Beverly Hills too. So I only do... Um, Potomac in Salt Lake City and I will be doing Atlanta because that's something that I watch faithfully. I, I might just start just doing all my Real Housewives. I did go into the archive so I said I'm going to start watching another Real Housewives. I'm not sure which one it was but I wanted to start a new one so I could start doing the reviews as well for the new um, upcoming um, episodes. But for as far as um, the Beverly Hills and the um, the New York, yeah, I, lo I, I, I actually love um, New York. It just had gotten too much for me, and then I had got Atlanta, and it was, you know, people of my persuasion. So 
I just jumped in today and uh, that's the reason why and also Potomac so if it doesn't really have people of my persuasion I'm not really interested because I'm looking for that kind of interplay so but New York was always good um, <clears throat> someone is talking to the blogs and telling them exactly what's going on in the house and then Ramona goes on an apology tour inside um, the the ultimate girls trip so someone leaked to the blogs that Ramona called Kenny a bitch. That Ramona was choosing her own room, like talking about everything word for word. So everybody was saying that the person who was blogging was a friend of Kenya's. Kenya says, yes, I know the person, but I don't talk to them about, you know, what's going on in our lives or whatever. Why would I do that? So we have our eyes open to see, you know, the blog gate and we want to know who that person was and what's going to happen on the next episode of the ultimate girls trip i'm pretty excited ramona went on an apology tour she apologized to everybody she let them know that she's not a person that like takes to new people well and so that may be one of the reasons why she was acting the way that she did but you know don't take it seriously or whatever and so i felt kind of good about that once she did make the apology she did try to make it better that man that ramona likes um that she met when she was in um the where did they go They are in, you know, from the islands. So, Turks and, Turks and Caicos. They're in the Turks and Caicos. So, um, I have a friend that lives there. We went to boarding school together. Hi. Hi, baby. I, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm, I guess we might do our little, I might put on my little Turks and Caicos outfit and come over to the trip with you guys one of these days so I can see my friend Keisha that I went to Westwood with that lives in the Turks and Caicos now. Anyway, so she's from Jamaica though. Um, so the next thing I wanted to talk about was the Atlanta couple, Kiana and Ronell Burns. They were involved in the murder-suicide um, a couple weeks ago. So this was very interesting because um it's being talked about by a lot of people because these people were supposed to be church people they he had a church called for your glory ministries and she had a beauty and barbershop beauty hair salon and barbershop in missouri st louis so they he the man ronell burns he had been on cheaters was it cheaters no he was on a judge show divorce court he was on divorce court in like 2014 or something like that and with his second wife because he'd been married three times this was his third wife so his first wife he married her he was supposed to pay her some type of spousal support he, he never did and then the second wife he and her were in divorce court because he said she was cheating but he was cheating and he wasn't taking care of her financially and whatever issue was going on <laughs> excuse me so with all of that she was like oh okay um he said he had been with his new wife which is kiana burns the hairstylist they have been together for nine years and been married for seven years they were living in st louis missouri and they had their businesses he had the church and they were like supposed to be christian people now he bought her a maserati levante last year and she was showing off a trunk full of louis, v louis, louis vuitton bags um they moved from missouri and they moved to a condo in chicago in 2020 it seems like and then they moved to atl in 2021 and in a house um august 2020 they were in a penthouse in Chicago and she said she was installing a chandelier. They wanted to expand their ministry, so that's why they moved to Atlanta. They were also with Primerica, which is like that hierarchy um, type business, MLM, they call it, multi-level marketing. Um, they had just filed bankruptcy and after they filed, filed bankruptcy, they bought her mother a car. So it's a lot of things going on, like with their finances. There are a lot of questions. There's a lot of questions. Um, he filed for divorce on October 19, 2021. She went live on October 23rd, 
the notice of service for the divorce papers were October 22nd, 2021. So she went live October 23rd. When she went live October 23rd, she was praying for help. She was asking for a hug. She said she wanted to get out of this nightmare. She said things come to break you. Sometimes you just got to stand strong. She said she kind of felt suicidal. She kind of felt like she needed to let the world know what was going on. She needed a hug. She needed to, to like come live and let people know that she wasn't doing too well. They weren't doing too great because they were in Atlanta. She said that they didn't have much um, support because of the fact that they didn't have any family members out there or whatever and so on and so forth so she did go live and i watched the live i don't know she wasn't dead like she wasn't emotional to me like tearing up she was just letting like people know that things were happening um apparently they were renting their home according to fulton county property search and when he filed for divorce he stated that they had been separated since october 1st um the last time she was featured on his social media was in July, between July and August. They also were trying to do a reality show, Meet the Burns, a couple of years ago. Um, there's a clip with her, like, cursing and a gunshot going off on her IG on a post for July 20th. But they're saying they, they might have been the night that she this occurred and somebody may have hacked into because it's all over the T. I went everywhere looking for it. And it's on his um, social media as well. The clip with the gunshot going off and the, the, the cursing. It's its really weird. Um, apparently, they owed $43,000 in back rent for the salon on um, Chateau Avenue in St. Louis. Um, that was back in 2017. Now, before she passed away, they passed away the other day, they had someone living with them who may or may not have been in the home when the situation occurred, the murder-suicide. And she called the business partners first, which is Primerica, because they're like 600-figure people for Primerica. So they have been climbing the ranks like. Um, the cameras were turned to the wall, and it says that there, a robbery may have occurred, like things were missing from the home. Um, the person who was staying in the home had access to the phones and the house for business. And that person might have found the body. She went on a Zoom meeting with the the business partners. And they told her not to go back into the house. She went back into the house for seven hours more. Um, her name is Lex, Alexis something. And I'm not sure how to take it. It's a lot of questions. Um, so, apparently, these people may be having some financial problems. They filed bankruptcy. This woman had been with this man. They had eight kids between them. She, have, she has two older girls a 16 year old and a 12 year old and maybe a six year old the child is in first grade now so she may be six or seven um and then he had four children two with his second wife and two children with somebody else some other baby mothers so generally you would see them with most of the kids um apparently she got with him she put him on her business um with the the barber shop and the hair salon and she she seems to have been doing kind of well and um they got together and she put him into the business i don't know if he's a scammer i don't exactly know what's going on but like the primerica business as you know it's a hierarchy but you do have to like when I, even the guy the other day they went i forgot what his name was but he was like interviewed by tasha k and he went was um arrested for taking his girlfriend's daughter to the party and drugging her and all this stuff and i forgot his name but he's one of those black um civil rights afrocentric type people we have a lot of those people out here like business people but when it comes to like the social media and so on they seem to spend a lot of time doing this thing where they are um fronting and like they have to it's a part of the marketing strategy to get people to follow you to get people to subscribe to you subscribe to your business subscribe to your thoughts your concept whatever it is that you're doing so he has a church he has the primerica and she has the salon and they're trying to start out in atlanta and they left the business back home to come to atlanta to try to do something however they just moved to atlanta like two three months ago so why would you move to atlanta and then file for divorce like it just doesn't make sense and he has a video on facebook where he was saying that they were going through something previously where they were 
were thinking about divorce before and then they decided not to get divorced and they decided to work their relationship out so why is it they not two months later you are on you know you're filing for divorce i feel like this man came into this woman's life she took some of her money she fixed him up you know got him set up you know got him looking good nice and clean ready to go they're doing this business i think she took maybe out some ppe loans and put towards the primerica business like that building of the amount of money that you're supposed to bring in i think that's some of her her money that she put in whether it's her savings or she took the money out of the business or money about home or wherever she got the money from and put it into this man to help to build the career that they're trying to build together and i think they i don't think that he thinks she fit his profile and i think that he was ready to push her to the side because he basically had gotten everything that he needed from her um i don't know if it was a murder suicide i i really do not know if she done it i don't understand why the cameras will be pointing to the wall i don't understand why um there was somebody else involved at all i just don't know there are many questions surrounding that so i did want to bring you that information guys because it's something that i'm going to be watching i'm going to be looking i'm searching the tea right now i spent like two days trying to figure out what's going on with these people so that i could bring it to you so there's more and i'm definitely going to be watching the case the police seem like it's cut and dry to them so they're just like oh yeah it's murder suicide and she shot him and then she shot herself apparently she shot him and she called the police and then she shot herself like I don't know if she was trying to save him. I don't know if she thought like, okay, well, I might as well kill myself because he's dead. Like, she, I don't understand why somebody would do that when they have kids. She has two kids at 12. She has four kids, but there's a 12-year-old and a 6-year-old. So why would you why would you do that? Like, what would possess you? I feel like there's some financial issues going on. And I feel like it was some stuff that was going to come out in the wash. And I feel like she could not take that embarrassment and knowing that... The man probably was somebody that people told her was no good and she overlooked what they say and fought herself to be with this man and then this happened so um we are going to follow the story of ronell and kiara kiana burns just a little bit more just to see if anything else comes out and if there's any more information i'll bring you updates but i did want to let you know about that and all the things that are being said rest in peace to them and um you know i'm praying for their kids so help pray for their kids guys and if you want to do any type of um assistance to ronald and kiana's family they do have maybe a gofundme you can find them on facebook or instagram to see if you can help out the family or, or anything like that um and i am done with that so i will bring you an update on that as soon as i'm able to all right so let's do this 